Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Truth Rising. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Truth Rising. These are our Truth Risers here from Vermont. Um, I have, it's Jim Hogue and Morningstar, myself. And uh, as you may know, we've been teaming it up for a while, taking it to the governor for his unlawful, uh, unlawful, unconstitutional lockdowns. And uh, we're still, we're still after freedom for you and ourselves. So today we're going to do we're going to catch up on what each has to bring to the table. And we're going to start with Morningstar. Morningstar. Hello, everyone. I know um, I've personally experienced in just my neighborhood um, some dear neighbors um, of mine, not only, you know, increased uh, health problems, but um, a very healthy 28 year old woman uh, carried to term. She was vaccinated during her pregnancy. Uh, she stopped getting the boosters though. Um, when she started uh, with complications, she couldn't produce milk. Uh, her milk wouldn't come in um, and the baby um, at six weeks old just passed away uh, from respiratory issues. So he was in NICU um, on a breathing machine and, uh, and they could not save this child. Um, so she, you know, it's, it's sad to say, but she f is questioning why that happened when she is a healthy young woman with absolutely no history of heart or respiratory problems, like so. Right, and the data is coming up in for the stillbirths and I have a great uh, niece who went in for RSV, respiratory syndrome. I don't know what the B stands for. Um, one has to wonder if it's either the graphene acting with a 5G or is it the clotting that's, that's in the lungs? Uh, and people, you know, I hope people watching this uh, We'll, we'll know that we've been warning about this all along and the numbers are absolutely horrific that are coming out. Uh, Jim, you wanna, anybody else wanna talk some more about it? Well, I have a question about that. The, from what I've heard, the people, the kids who are getting this, um, there's no correlation with vaccination. Except for the mothers right. who are vaccinated. Yeah, the, uh, the unvaccinated, are, it, it seems like the unvaccinated are as vulnerable to this as the vaccinated. Where, but I don't know. I, that's just the that I know about it. Where did you get that data? Because I've seen. Uh, oh, gosh. I get 100 emails a day. I don't know. I don't know where I got it. I think it's a matter of negative. I didn't get anything indicating that it was one way or the other. Oh, I've seen plenty indicating that it's to vaccinated people or people who are even having their children vaccinated or getting this RS. Okay. Um, so I just, I live right in downtown Burlington, uh, about a block away from a public education system, a school, um, and they have started mandating the vaccine, the COVID, the the coronavirus vaccine for all elementary school children. Oh my God. Um, as far as what I'm hearing in the neighborhood, um, my neighbor in back, um, she finally, she did, she got her 13 year old, his first shot. Um, and it, it's called Sustainability Academy here. Um, and that school was very close to shutting down two weeks ago around Thanksgiving. They were going to shut down the week before because of the respiratory, the R, uh, the RSV, that virus that's going around. And the majority of children, as far as what I've heard, I have submitted a request to see the numbers of children that are, have actually been vaccinated so far at the Sustainability Academy. I'm focusing on them. Um, and the majority of children have been, is what I'm hearing, have been vaccinated in elementary school from first grade, no kindergartners, uh, but from first grade up. So, and they, they were pretty close to shutting down a few weeks ago. Well, and anecdotally, um, I met with my uh, business partner's kids and his, uh, their kids, so his grand grandchildren, 
And the mom said that, you know, everybody's been sick. They've been constantly getting sick over and over again. And you know, what, what do you say? Well, why did you take that thing? <laughs> what do you say? There's, it's, a, it's truly a, a horrific crime that's, that's happened. And now, now it's about to come out on Twitter. The people who are getting sick, even if that's the only variable in their life is the vaccine, they, they still can't make the connection. They can't. There's something blocking the, the brain cells. They're not making the connection. Mm. I think it's because their doctors aren't making the connection. Yes. But did any, anybody getting yeah. money? Yeah. Uh, for the first time ever, I have a naturopath. I'm very blessed with a naturopath for my son. Um, for the first time, we just went in for a little checkup, um, a physical. Um, and for the first time in years, she actually has vaccination propaganda hanging up in her office. This is a naturopath. So they will be fined if they don't hang it up for is what I got from her very like roundaboutly when I talked to her about it, but they don't ask you and they don't push it. She said she just had to hang it up, quote unquote, had to hang it up. So um, I'm wondering sometimes too, just from talking like living right downtown um, that sometimes, or for example, the woman, you know, my neighbor, she was desperate. She's a single mother. She needs the child care. I'm sorry to say that, you know, I, I was there last year. I pulled my son out because I wasn't willing to negotiate anything. Um, so, but she was desperate and that's why uh, she vaccinated her son. So I think maybe sometimes even though it, they might not, you know, they maybe don't just have the blinders on like, no, that can't happen. That can't happen. But desperate people do desperate things. And that's, that's my angle working with people in Burlington is how can we all support each other so we don't force ourselves to go against our own gut instinct. Yeah. yeah. As mothers or what, you know, caregivers. Would you share your experience of getting shedded upon? That was last year. That was last year. Yep. Uh, I was at a job site, a uh, man left just brief. Um, anyway, I, I, uh, my menstrual cycle, I had my menstrual cycle for months. Um, well, you, you had, you had, if I recall, you were working with them in a construction and it was a hot day and your arms rubbed up against each yeah. other. So you shared uh, the sweat and that's how you thought sweat. you might have gotten uh, indirectly exposed to the vaccine. And then you had, you had severe, me I had my period for months. Mm -hmm. And that's what's being shown in all the data. And now, this is interesting, now I don't get one. At all? No. Not, not very much. That's correct. I just had, um, and I was wondering if it is it, if it, you know, menopause, perimenopause, and my numbers are, uh, I do have extremely high estrogen levels, which is opposite of the last time when I had my thyroids and stuff checked where I'm a high testosterone woman. Mm -hmm. And now my estrogen is higher than the testosterone. So. Wow. Yeah, well, you, you, you might think about um, eating apricot pits. Uh, okay. Lay a trail that's uh, like five or six a day um, for, for cancer prevention. And that comes from a world without cancer that um, Edward Griffin researched years ago, and he just passed last week. So um, he's, a, he's an amazing truth speaker. That is, and that just, it makes me question with the estrogen uh, situation, not only are we being bombarded with estrogen, not only in our soaps and foods, right? Uh, but high estrogen levels can stop milk production in women, right? And miscarriage, a too high estrogen count. So I just wonder, you know, what that correlation is between, you know, the, you know, do they throw estrogen in this, in this, uh, clinical trial, you know, this vaccine that's still in clinical trials and it's changing our estrogen levels. It's hard to say. I haven't memorized all the what's in there, but you're, you're too young for menopause. menopause that right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. 
it's uh it's truly sad um i've had this battle with my son um and especially now that we have people like ron ron johnson coming out with a did everybody watch those hearings uh that he did with the the COVID hearings they were excellent and they were irrefutable um and I can't, I still can't get people to watch them at all. They call it a belief. That's your belief. Right. And I said, these are the facts. It isn't a belief. Anyways, Jim, take the floor for a while, please. Yeah, Gary Flominoff uh, and, and both Gary Flominoff and uh, Rob Williams have just completely thrown in the towel when it comes to Vermont. Now, you know, they're fighters. Rob Williams never never wore a mask, didn't get vaccinated and was on, on our website, the Vermont Independent website. And he's just said, it's, it's hopeless. And Gary Plumanoff, um, the same thing. He, um, Rob said, he's not wasting an iota of energy any, anymore in Vermont. And because I had invited him to join a, uh, a Zoom webinar thing that the Humanities Council is putting out with a guy who's discussing conspiracy theorists and, and how that's hurting democracy and how we could eat, eat them alive. You know, I mean, I, I was lying awake the other night just having a little bit of fun in my head going through the actual conspiracies that existed since World War One, since about that time, starting with the uh, formation of the Federal Reserve, and right in through getting America into World War One, and then two, and then you know fifty or so actual conspiracies that we know have been proven, including the Israeli attack against the USS Liberty, and the conspiracy of LBJ and uh, McNamara and Admiral McCain to prevent Americans from knowing about that attack against the USS Liberty. So these conspiracies, so the, the opposite is true is what I'm getting at is that those people who expose these conspiracies are the ones saving democracy. And this idiot is giving a talk about those very people are the ones who are uh, putting a dent in democracy, are risking democracy. So how does anybody's mind get so perverted as to think that exposing a deadly conspiracy is bad for democracy? So um, I was inviting some of the, the brain trust to join me like Mercola and uh, Matthias Desmet to, to, to really you know, let these people have it. And uh, I think that, that, that half of my brain says, it's simply not worth it. What's the point? You're, it's like talking to a tree. It's, it's like talking to a zombie. So don't do it. Don't do it, Jim. You're just gonna frustrate yourself. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the kind of conversation it, it, you know, the conversation was only a few words on, a, on an email, but it's the kind of conclusion that I think I've had to come to, that I should be coming to, instead of wasting my time on these people, just forget it, because Vermont is, is like living in an insane asylum. So anyway, that's one conversation that I've been having. Uh, and then the good news is that there are those people like um, Mr. Carpenter, what's his first name? Uh, Calendar, his last name's Calendar. Uh, he went through all the plans of the deep state for the last 20 or 30 years. And he said, they're off schedule. It's not working out for them. They were supposed to have their plan Remember the PNAC plan, plan for a new American century. That was effected perfectly. 
that was the neocon plan to set up the terrorist state. The, um, you know, it, it changed the way Americans live overnight from, not, from the 9-11 attacks. That was their plan, change the way we live overnight and then attack Afghanistan and Iraq and, and Syria and the other seven countries that Westmoreland warned us about. They pulled that off perfectly without a hitch. And it didn't matter how much truth we brought into the matter. We were still conspiracy theorists and uh, we made essentially no dent in their plan. But this plan, the plan that was affected by COVID, he's explained, he explained, uh, I forget Calendar's first name. He explained how it was off track and they wanted to have the reset going by 2018. And that failed. They wanted everybody vaccinated and that failed. They wanted everybody wearing a mask and that failed. Didn't fail in Vermont, of course, but it, it, it failed basically around the world and, and throughout the country. So that's good news, he says. And now we have all these lawsuits um, and we covered it very well, Emily, thanks to you, the Brunson. And that's getting a lot of coverage on Epic Times, Epoch Times, and through other programs. That's being mentioned quite a bit because it's a, a savior in the waiting uh, for us. And then there are some other lawsuits that are on their way. And the uh, Carrie Lake is very exciting, what she's doing in Arizona. And if she has the, the Republican party behind her, and she may not, for all I know, the Republicans are ditching the way they always do and the way the Democrats always do when there's a little pressure on them. But maybe in this case, she'll have the, the Republican party behind her. She certainly has, um, what's his name? Tucker Carlson with her and all of the alternative press is behind her 100%. And she has got cold, hard, slam dunk evidence that the uh, election in Arizona was fraudulent. And I, I don't know whether, I think I, I sent it to you and you replied that a veteran who was crying in her car from watching people line up at 5 a.m. and not be able to vote. And uh, that's, that's very moving stuff. So anyway, that's, that's the good news, is that Carrie Lake look, might, might get somewhere, Brunson might get somewhere, and the plan that they have been working on, they are desperately, look what they're desperately doing. Who's this idiot who says now people are getting sick because of why? They're worrying. And it's our fault. Emily, it's your fault and it's my fault that people are worrying and they're, and they're getting sick. It's not the vaccine. It's not COVID. It's not the vaccine. It's us because we're making people worried. And right. you know, there are probably people dumb enough to believe that. But that's how desperate their rationale is and the mainstream is of course picking up on it because they don't have anything else to go on. Yeah, I agree with you. And what is so interesting with this uh, Brunson case, which is uh, claiming that because the Congress uh, did not investigate the 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 credible claims of uh, election interference and fraud with uh, foreign actors in uh, on January sixth, that. Uh, the shush, shush, please. That the uh, that 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 they uh, did an act of treason, or they didn't follow the Constitution because uh, they had to. Um, I'm sure I've got somebody on hold. Brigham just came in, um, and what's really interesting now is that Twitter, of course, is revealing that the FBI, the uh, Democrats were uh, leaning on Twitter and were um, removing content uh, that, that was in a total violation of the Constitution in the First Amendment because the FBI 
And of course, the, the Democrats are downplaying it. But what this contributes to is the overall treason and gives the, the case more merit uh, for the, the, the Supreme Court. Uh, it certainly could be added to their pleadings uh, for that. So um, that makes it a more powerful case. Um, and uh, it's a very, very interesting time. And I, I just, uh, I, I wish we could get to a place. I think where the Twitter is gonna come out at least Elon Musk is gonna release much more of the COVID information that was suppressed. Uh, you know, yeah, and Matt Taibbi says that that's more is coming. Right, and with that, uh, with that, I have great hope that the, uh, the people, once they get to that place of accepting the uh, crimes against humanity, accepting and, 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 and seeing that they've, been duped, they've been um, the victim of, of crime to have been coerced to take this, that then they're gonna turn and allow and impel the doctors amongst us to begin to listen to the brave doctors who have been investigating methods to uh, help those who have already been vaccinated. And some will say there's no help, but after I went to the um, frontline doctors conference down in uh, Florida and listen to the doctors and their presentations. Um, I came away believing that they had machines to clean the blood. I saw it, it was a presentation. Um, again, also with the appropriate uh, uh, immune system protocols, like the, you know, 10,000 10, IUs of vitamin D a uh, day is, is appropriate for us and the amount of vitamin C's. And what I think we're gonna see is an incredible opening of um, natural health, of uh, recognition of um, not only the, the uh, complete corruption, because once the Democrats get it, how, co how corrupt it is that they were co coerced to take this bioweapon, then we're unified again. Um, and, and to that end, I've been working on how do we do things differently? Um, and I've been uh, really putting my nose to the grindstone with this uh, sort of this uh, um, enterprise approach to freedom rather than a political approach where we choose a side and get divided and fight and have ideological, you know, that you're bad and I'm good and you're racist and I'm not and all that. That's not gonna work anymore. So um, I'd love it because I just finished today the uh, governance video um, and it needs one more pass at it, but it's up on YouTube. And, and, and I would love to have you have the first eyes on it uh, if you're willing to. Are you, are you, may I pull it up and pause the video and pull it up for us? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi everybody, we just paused for a minute and, and uh, Brigham and Adrian joined us to, we're gonna watch this little video that I've been really rubbing my nose to the grindstone. But before we do, it really uh, needs to be talked about that, uh, Elon is looking like a, you know, really marvelous champion of freedom of speech, uh, and it is a marvelous thing that he is doing that. However, that being said, um, one must step back and look at his greater intentions, and some of his intentions are to have everybody flock on, as far as I can tell, flock on to Twitter and then make Twitter the point of doing all business and uh, it, go moving into these this uh, internet of people, the the everything that are eyes, and that's why I've been wanting people to watch this um, this piece that is called uh, a digital prison with Aman Jabi, and it's just uh, it's it's profound, and the only way we can stop this digital ID is to know about it. And they did a lot of rolling out during COVID of a surveillance and now, for example, new cars are gonna have like 16 cameras 
and uh, you're experiencing up in Burlington, the kind of eyes that are happening. And should this digital um, central bank digital currency come out, they're going to be able to geofence us by A, not allowing our cards to work past a certain time, eliminating uh, cash. And I'm just saying these are what their intentions are, not that we're going to do workarounds. And also on these polls, and they aren't necessarily around here so much, they have actual LED weapons. And that movie, uh, The Digital Prison with the guy Aman Jabi, there's several that are named Digital Prison on YouTube. That's the one to watch and as well as Died Suddenly. So um, do, do you want to add, anybody want to add anything about Elon? Um, just be wary. I don't. I don't think anybody should be um, have all the power. Myself. Yeah, I am ignorant of his future plans. Um, I'm listening, and I'm, I'm not arguing. I just, you know, don't know anything about his future plans. But I got the biggest kick. I mean, I'm still floating because of the way these hypocrites are running around like chickens with their heads cut off because there's some guy letting everybody back on Twitter. Right. I mean, the, the idea that free speech is coming back as part of something we value is, is so out of their realm of thought. They, they've already eliminated that that rule, and it, that happened at, at Goddard College at the radio station a long time ago. Uh, I could see it coming and then it came. And so to have somebody like Elon Musk bring it back is um, frightening, apparently, to these people who don't want to hear other points of view. So from that point of view, I personally get a big kick out of what he says. And out of the people who are running around, as I said, like chickens with their heads cut off. Um, and I, I, I hope that his future plans do not involve AI in, in terms of how people have to adjust their lives to, to AI. Mm. Okay. Well, just well, to speak um, on that, he has already, right? I mean, he just hosted all the Starlink satellites. I mean, the entire world mm -hmm. right now is covered in satellites outside of our atmosphere, magnosphere, you know, and then exactly what Jim said, you know, so we all got used to, right? We're like, okay, we're losing our freedom of speech. We're losing our freedom of speech. So here comes this person with a carrot in front of us. Oh, look, you can have it back and only on Twitter. And I'm doing these great things. It's almost like, you know, the way the human brain works, you know, you take it away and then you give it a little, it's like an abusive relationship, the honeymoon period. It's literally like the wheel of domestic violence, you know? <laughs> So here's your instant gratification. You can say what you want for a little while and then right. we'll see. Okay. But
So, uh, Jim, it would be really cool to hear what your thoughts are regarding all these things are set up, whether it be the legislature, whether it be the regional commissions, whether it be selectmen's meetings or uh, conservation societies. And Emily bringing up this idea of the future of Putney meeting, maybe people are beginning to sort of think. But what I see is every one of these layers is blind. And I don't know how we can get them not to be blind. The conservation committees are the perfect example around the state. They're just, they have their LL Bean boots on and their socks over their eyes and they wanna preserve uh, habitat for birds in the cutoff power line zones, just to give you an idea of how far off they are. So here's all the stuff, you know, it's just incredible. But the idea is, don't doesn't it seem possible that we could somehow turn these systems that are somewhat in place already to doing good or being positive or uh, at least waking up and uh, I'd, I'd love to have some positive feedback on that okay so, yeah yeah we were just talking about, we were. we were just talking about how sorry jim let me go and then I'll, I'll, how um the stuff that's being dumped on twitter which is going to be uh, undeniable about the the nature of the bioweapon weaponization of these yeah. quote unquote vaccines. Yeah. And once the Democrats do uh, finally come to that awful, awful, awful realization that uh, not only their their whole doc, all their doctors and all their uh, their representatives have conspired against them either knowingly or Please. coerce them. And, and they find out that they really have been betrayed when that happens. And that's coming soon because I the stuff so. is coming out on, I mean, that it's undeniable and the stuff is coming out on Twitter. And, and uh, then the, the, the Democrats are going to want an answer. They're gonna to wanna to save themselves. They're gonna employ the doctors and there are some out there mm -hmm. who have some of these remedies, they're going to bone up on their, uh, you know, their immune systems and as well as accountability. And, and so what I'm working on is because the trust in our current politics, electing politicians to corporations who do the ultimate bidding of Vanguard and BlackRock, I mean, that's going to be totally decimated and crushed. So what I'm describing is a way we can move forward and a way we can have democracy in a representative uh, method through uh, a commerce that is more unilaterally owned by the people and with a, 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 a governance methodology that works within it and across it so that we, our wisdom comes forward. And, and I, I believe it's a good offering and it's a, it's a, it's a good you know, offer because we cannot, continue to do the same thing and expect a different result. Just like if we put out another fiat, uh, a fiat debt-based money, it would fail again in 50 years. Yeah, I want to answer Brian's question. Good. Uh, the, the, everything that you just mentioned and, and asked me about, it's a tool, of yeah. course. And a tool can be used for good or a tool can be used for evil. You can hit somebody over the head with a hammer, or you can drive a nail in with it. And so I, 
that, that's my first answer to that part. Yeah. Uh, another, one of my causes since I got involved with uh, Thomas Naylor and before that was decentralization. Right. Small, beautiful. The Schumacher Society. I've, I've always believed in that sort of thing, even though small can be just as corrupt as big, but it's harder for them to get away with it, usually. So uh, I, I'm a decentralist and I see the work that's being done by Emily and by uh, Abe Collins and by um, Gary Plomanoff and Rob Williams and, and myself, we're all decentralists and we are trying to throw power where it's not a waste of time. Yeah. And Emily's efforts with you grow at this point do not look like a waste of time. And what Rob Williams and I just discussed was how not to waste our time. Right. And that can, that my last point is something that I think you missed. I, I don't think you were here when I did my rant. No. Again, brain dead Vermont. And we all agreed pretty much to give up on Vermont. My, my thought is that in Montpelier, the legislature and most of the people are just playing in a sandbox. Mm -hmm. In other words, they are infants who have a world uh, partly given to them, but partly they've created it themselves, a world of fiction, wherein the vaccines are all good, the masks are good, uh, don't you don't have to worry about anything that the that there's no such thing as the deep state, and you also you missed my rant about this fellow named Derry who's going to be speaking at uh, for the on behalf of the Humanities Council about conspiracy theorists hmm. who instead of be doing their dil diligence for exposing conspiracies like you know the bay of pigs invasion and the uh the scandals of 2008 and the savings and loan scandal and the attack of israel against the uss liberty those things are not for democracy why that's a danger to democracy to expose that stuff that's his that's what the way his talk is built Oh. Now, the Humanities Council built it that way. Maybe that's not what he's going to talk about, but that's the way they build it, that those of us who expose these conspiracies are hurting democracy. And it's so, it's so mind-blowing that you, you, you can't you get your head around it at all. I mean, if it weren't for Daniel Ellsberg and, and JFK and Martin Luther King talking about the evils of the, the Vietnam War and how we got into it, I mean, my God, that's what democracy, that, that's the very blossoming and, and continuation of, of democracy. And these idiots think- Well, why don't we call them, what about if we call them suffocators? <laughs> I don't care, call them whatever you like. Well, I mean, I think, yeah. I think it's important. I mean, the, the conspiracy theorist is such a powerful, label and they're label lynching you know they're doing an, a personal attack instead of dealing with the information i think it's important to have an equally powerful uh descriptor for that um and i think it's suffocator be the them moment. for that the, the humanities council yeah 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 you know, the suffocators and <laughs> we're the enlightened well yeah. we're, we're, and, we're at least uh you know, we're, we're, we're at least bringing forth an alternative point of view. Well, a lot better than that. Um, Claudia calls us conspiracy truthers. If you bring out yeah. the truth of what the CIA did to try to get Kennedy to invade Cuba, you're, <laughs> you're helping democracy. You're saving lives. You're doing a beautiful thing. Oh, and that's right. what Kennedy yeah. did. Yeah, and right now we have, of course, the uh, the FBI lied about their involvement to uh, to, to uh, uh, censor the crimes of the Biden family. Uh, yeah. they, they lied about uh, inventing stories with the Democrats having a 
uh, an office right in the uh, DNC, had a, having a co-sharing a space, wow. uh, yeah. and, and then creating this dossier, wow. which was totally fabricated, accusing Trump of um, collaborating with the Russians. Uh, yeah. you know, these are proven conspiracies already. Uh, and yeah. for those of us, those people who expose that, they're the heroes. Right. They're not guilty of doing anything wrong. Right. They're the heroes. Right. And uh, these, right. And, and Assange, these suffocators are right. yeah, suffocators. flipping. Yeah. Assange and also Snowden, of course. And yeah. then uh, what was that? January 6th was mm -hmm. really Pelosi's whole uh, it was her whole responsibility, and it was also her, probably, uh, her involvement with the FBI, because the FBI have not caught or not wanted to catch the principals, and there mm -hmm. were uh, people who were planted there who were mm -hmm. no Ray Epps, who was an FBI informant and stuff. So this is, a, these are the real conspiracies that are harming the American people and, and those people who are right this moment in solitary confinement oh, yeah. for uh, going into the, the Capitol when the police open the doors and invite them in mm -hmm. and all they did was walk around mm -hmm. and they've been in mm -hmm. solitary confinement. You know, people should have no doubt that these, uh, these politicians are uh, cruel. Are, are outlandishly inhumane and they are working for inhumane uh, um, the, the Democrats are saying that these people invaded the, uh, the, the Capitol building and that they're guilty of blah, 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 blah. And, and they believe it. They actually believe that these people did a lot wrong. And the attorney, I heard one of the attorneys speak for a uh, one of these people, and he said, this is just payback. This is the FBI, this is the government's way of paying you back for being a patriot, for being a Republican. Wow. This is their time now. They're, they're, you're in jail because you showed support for Trump, not because you did anything wrong. This is the attorney for the guy saying this. Wow. Yeah, and it's 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 just unbelievable. And but you know what really gets me is that they're talking about this double standard. I don't want to talk about the double standard. I want to talk about taking it to the people who are breaking the law, and who are uh, you know just um, with whom we should have zero trust in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. As far as what I've observed in my life, um, they're all, I mean, whether Republican, Democrat, it's all psychological warfare. I mean, we can go back to, you know, you bring up the White House and the CIA and the Pike Committee of 1975. I mean, the CIA and the White House signed a contract with each other blatantly in 1975, and it goes back even further than that. And then just real quick, <clears throat> um, Jim mentioned, you know, and, and uh, oh, Emily, please forgive me, sir. What is your friend's name? The Brigham. Brigham. Yeah, thank you. Hi, hi, sir. Hi, so hi, going hi. back to, you know, how Jim was saying, uh, decentralized individuals, such as all of us here, right, on this call. Um, so I'd love to fill you in on some little positive things, um, you know, because it does start as far as what, you know, in, in, in my works here in Burlington, we started Food Not Bombs. OK, so they are small, positive impacts that make huge, huge. I mean, it's it's getting huge across the state. Um, you know what I mean? And then for another example, uh, we've you know, you guys were talking about the conservative society. So we reached out to our local historical society uh, because we found out the Constitution was no longer in circulation. Well, we wrote to them, it is now back in circulation and you can get it from your library or order it from your, you know, online library, you know, online library, stuff like that. So I just want to remind everybody, it's small things sometimes that turn into huge works and has a huge impact and big results. I use food, not bombs when, you know, I started this down here and now we have food, not caught, you know, all these different little things. And I always use that to sit and talk with people, 
you know, about these just little things, you know, what do you think about the vaccine? What do you think about the government? You know, what are they doing for you? And you would be surprised. There are more people speaking out against everything, especially the homeless population, the poverty struck in. We are the ones who are speaking against it. And we need a voice. If we had a way to give the homeless, to give the poverty, to give the underbelly of society a voice, we could really make huge strides in the state of Vermont and across the country. So that's all. So I just want to, there's some positive stuff for you. Yeah. I just want to say that, that, you know, it is work like that, 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 that huge work of getting the constitution back before the yep. public because yes. there is a clause in the Vermont constitution, which allows the Supreme court to update it without it going through the process of, right. like, being, oh yes. And so right. they were altering it. They wanted to alter it uh, by removing it from- Right, the circulation, place. yes. And you could put it in the digital places and change it and how would anybody Correct. read it? So, Correct. So, you know, th those are, and, and the other thing I think that we can do, we the people, maybe there's yeah. people right here to start it, is there's, we can reinstitute the Council of, of Censors. Mm. Yes. Yeah, my friend Rick, uh, um, Rick, I uh, uh, can't think of his last name. He had formed a committee many years ago to discuss reforming the Council of Censors. It was a very erudite uh, group of, you know, PhDs and people like that. But it was a very important idea. Yep. And, and everybody who doesn't know the Council of Censors, cens Censors was a an elected body that was independent of the uh, the politicians, right. and they were to look over the politicians' shoulders and report back to the people when they were uh, erring or straying from our constitution. And so, what happened was, I don't know the date, but maybe you will. No. The uh, government oversight was oh, yeah. proposed, and that. Um, that replace them in, inappropriately. It must have been a, a, a corruption. Uh, however, mm -hmm. since all the power reverts to us, it just is up to us to organize ourselves and to reveal ourselves as such and to do that work. Yep. Mm -hmm. but the next thing after you grow. Well, actually, I think I think the you grow <laughs> government is, is is much better. Um, yeah. Uh, it's it's so much better and 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 it's I, i'm calling it for a new america and and i'll, I'll put it on the back of this uh, video so that the people can see it and well i'll share it with you privately so uh, you know Can't and i think precious. i think i may be the the only person who has publicly been ranting about coercion which is a crime in vermont i have the statute right a few feet away from me it's a crime Yes, And there's no argument that what UVM did for the, with its students and the entire educational system in Vermont used yes. coercion. Yes, as well as the medical, the medical, medical and the police department and the fire department and our military, it is all coercion, all of it. They yeah. use coercion. And, and it's against the law. And there's yes. no one in the constabulary who wants to dare, or in the judicial system, who would even dare mention that. Well, I mean, that's the problem. See, so that's the huge problem because, uh, you know, we we can call it out, but the, the players that are supposed to um, take people to task aren't. They mm -hmm. outgun us, they out uh, finance us. So that when you were talking about how, you know, if, if, if the, um, the underrepresented, the people don't show up to vote because they see the, the homeless, the you know, if when we when we organize in commerce across this and we we make that stable boat to float right the fuck out of here. Sorry, I used French. <laughs> yeah, go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then then, then we, my we, language. <laughs> it's like an arc. It's like, you know, it's just like, how do we do this peacefully? Mm -hmm. And the only way we can do this peacefully is and is by doing it lawfully with commerce. Because these aren't peaceful people. No. No. Yep. That's great. Yeah. The plumbers is really the way. Yeah. Hmm. Now I've got a little bit of business to do with uh, Mr. Brigham here. Well, may I be excused? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, we're, we're all exhausted now from the great effort. 
I'm talking. Yeah. And actually, I think uh, uh, Brigham has brought, uh, I don't know, I think she made some of the venison you brought. I don't know. Thank you. And people should know that Brigham feeds himself from the land, feeds his family, doesn't get on IT, and he has nice. the best life. He goes all around and, and talks to people all over, is is like our, our personal Saint Nick. Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. And if you're ever in Burlington, my door is open. Oh, thank and you so much. Yes. And you know that you're always welcome here. <laughs> thank you. By all, even though Padma, thank even you, though thank Padma you. is not here. <laughs> oh no, that's fine. All the better. <laughs> all the better. <laughs> <laughs> all right all beloved right. lovely to see both of you thank you look forward to more in the future and, yes. uh, okay vermonters right, we're speaking the truth because we love you yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> bye bye